there's one thing you know about Mr. Nystrand, it's probably that he loves to ride his bike. That's why today we were originally planning on doing an interview where I go for a run and Mr. Nystrand goes for a bike ride and we meet up in the middle online and talk about what we're doing to exercise. However, after hearing from Mayor Lori Lightfoot yesterday that people are going outside too much and not social distancing, we decided to do this interview from the comfort of our own back porches. Because of that, we were both a little bit bummed. But as we talked through the interview, we worked out ways that we would change our routines and adapt so that we could stay sharp mentally and physically during this time. Stay tuned also later in the interview for his book recommendations and then at the very end, for posts and links to different YouTube series and videos for people who want to work out aerobically and for strength at home. Catch you on the flip side. This is Mr. Buse. Uh, we are, hold on, are we, we, we are live? Yes, we are live. Uh, hello, everybody. We're live. It's uh, 8, 10 in the morning on Thursday. What day is it? March 26th. And uh, we're here yep. with Mr. Nystrand. Uh, Mr. Nystrand, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Mr. Nystrand. I teach physics um, at Solorio, as you would expect. I'm uh, here at my home, sitting on the balcony, enjoying this, this nice morning outdoors. Yeah, so... Uh, what have you been doing to kind of stay sharp during this closure time? Uh, keep yourself occupied. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fight off some of that crampness of this isolation. I mean, I've been trying to kind of stick to a routine. So I've been um, hosting online classes for my students every day. And I find that it helps me a lot personally. I hope it helps my students too. But it definitely helps me just to have like kind of a, a daily routine to try to keep doing the same things at the same time waking up early and making breakfast, um, you know, not staying up too late. Um, I'm very much a, a creature of routine. So um, to me, I need that just to stay sharp. Um, but aside from that, you know, I try not to, to get into too many black holes with, with being on my phone all day, reading mm -hmm. the news and, and watching TV and stuff like that. Um, I try to just put that away when, when it gets overwhelming, because for sure it gets overwhelming. Sometimes the news is just too bleak. Um, and I've been trying to get outside a lot, like get outside at least once a day, go for a walk, go for a bike ride. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, those are kind of my, my tips. Yeah. And, and so you're a person of routine. Um, many people, many, many people at Solorio will know that that means that part of your routine is a pretty long bike ride in the morning and in the evening. Yeah, that's true. So that's, that's definitely been an adjustment for me. Um, I've been on my bike um, a fair amount. I just kind of, go ride somewhere around. Um, I'm pretty close to downtown, so it can be kind of fun just to, to pop over and see some of the, the sites of Chicago, some of the tourist stuff, like the Bean or whatever. There's usually nobody there. Um, yeah. But it seems like I'm going to have to kind of limit that. Um, right. Because I guess we've been outside too much, so um, so we all have to do our part, and, and I'm just going to have to give up more of that routine. Yeah. Yeah, viewers, you'll notice this is a little bit more of a, of a grim interview, and that's not just because of, of, the, <laughs> of the lighting outside, but Mr. Nystrand, uh, well, we were going to do this interview from two different uh, locations far from our homes. I was going to do a social distance run to the woods, and you were going to bike. Where were you planning on biking to? I was just going to kind of bike around the, the neighborhood a little bit, maybe pop downtown into the loop and, and just kind of see what's going on. Yeah, but but... Mayor Lightfoot yesterday issued a new proclamation in, you know, an ever-changing world. What was this quote that you gave? Uh, her exact um, quote. Do you have it on your phone? Yeah, I can open it up. Um, the quote was, you cannot go on long bike rides, so I meant that. Um, playgrounds are shut down. You must abide by the order. Outside is for a brief respite, not for 5Ks. That's on, I yeah. can't emphasize enough that we abide the rules and yeah, Mr. Abuse, you probably don't consider a 5K a very long run, do you? Well, no, but I mean, when she says long bike rides, she probably means a five-mile bike ride, which I know for you, you're usually knocking out at least five miles just to get to school. Sure, yeah, yeah. So that's definitely 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think I definitely need to change my expectations of, of what mm -hmm. I'm allowed to do. And, you know, I get that it's not about me. It's, right. it's, um, it's a bigger thing. So I, I'm, I'm happy to, to make that sacrifice. But I'm not going to lie, of course, it stinks. Yeah. So, so being growth mindset, hashtag growth mindset, hashtag go far together. <laughs> How, what, uh, what kind of things uh, can we brainstorm, you know, for ourselves, but also for people out there, maybe I know I have a lot of students who enjoy running or going on bike rides or, you know, going to the park and just hanging out. And it seems like, you know, Mayor Lightfoot is saying we, we need to kind of shut all of that down for, the yeah, good, yeah. for the good reason of public health. So if people are stuck inside or maybe just have access to a backyard, uh, I just have like this, this 15 foot wide little balcony. That's all I got outside. So. <laughs> what's your, what's your plan? Are you going to become Maybe a just yoga like person? Pace, pace back and forth down this balcony um, for like half an hour straight. Um, you know, I do like yoga. Actually, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that, but um, I'm not very good at it, um, but I could probably follow some YouTube videos or something like that. So that's, that's a fun idea. I can get into that. I mean, I, she did say the mayor that, you know, outside still okay for a brief respite. So, I mean, I think, to me, that means it's okay to go for a walk, but don't congregate in parks, um, which is so easy to do. Um, but yeah, like maybe just try to walk around less populated areas, like find a really quiet street with no beyond and then walk there. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I don't think I'm gonna just stay cooped up inside 100% of the time, but I, I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna disrespect the, the rule and I know that it's important, so. Right, right. What about you? What, what do you think you're going to do without your runs? Well, I mean, maybe you can still go on short ones. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel I'll probably still try to get an early morning mile in. Um, yeah, I yeah. live close to a pretty large uh, forest preserve, so I don't feel too – keeping my social distance there is pretty easy. I'm very lucky to have that. Other than that, I've got this uh, pretty disgusting-looking backyard <laughs> that – I think all my neighbors hate me for. They can probably hear me doing this right now. So I think, I think the backyard is going to uh, become my cardio zone in terms of picking up dog poop and tearing up weeds. Well, that sounds like a, a great opportunity, actually. It sounds like you've got a lot to do back there. Yes, yes. Have you thought about um, vegetable gardening? Are you into that? Is that something you do already? Uh, I, I think uh, the people who had uh, this place before us, they, they said it was uh, all native plants. And there's a little sign that says certified wildlife habitat. I don't oh, know if they said native cool. plants, if that just means if you don't take care of it, it's technically native plants. <laughs> I don't think that's what that means. So um, I, I've, I've thought about some vegetable gardening. It seems a little bit easier to just let nature take its course. Um, sure, but I do, yeah. have, I do have inside, I've got a little herb garden going. That's um, fun. What kind of herbs you got? We've got some sage, we've got some dill, we've got some parsley. Nice. Uh, we've got some arugula starting. I know arugula is technically not an herb that would be considered no. a main course vegetable. Um, <laughs> so, but, but those, are, those are starting up. So maybe, maybe we'll move into it, but. Uh, you know, they call it rocket over on the other side of the pond. Rocket? Rocket, that's what they call arugula. Like a, like a, like a space rocket? Like a rocket ship, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, it's not like they're not naming it after the rocket even though it does kind of look like a rocket. Um, it's like the same like etymology as arugula, like ruga, rocket, like sounds similar. Like they come from the same root word, but, but they rocket, call it rocket. I would much rather eat rocket than arugula. Yeah, you can, you can just start making rocket salads instead of arugula salads. <laughs> it is rocket now. And you'll be a lot cooler. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Nystrand, um, you know, you, you might be spending some more time inside now. Um, yeah, yeah. What, what books are you reading? What movies, what TV you're watching? What, what are you listening to? What's kind of, what's the media going into your brain right now? And yeah, so um, I recently started reading a book that like, well, I started before this stuff got really serious with COVID and it was, it was kind of like a, a post-apocalyptic book and I'm finding it, it hard to have much of an appetite to read that now. Mm -hmm. um, but I recently read um, Educated um, Very good. That. Uh -huh. Yeah, by by Tara Westover. That's about a uh, a young woman who grows up in like a super strict um, uh, kind of radical Mormon family in mm -hmm. um, not Utah, and I think in Idaho. In Idaho, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it, so it's kind of about her process of 
coming of age. It's definitely a coming of age story and, and realizing that she has n not a, exactly a normal childhood um, and coming to terms with some terrible abuse in her family as well. Um, it's really, really powerful. Um, um, that was definitely something that I, I couldn't, you know, read fast enough. I, I yeah. devoured that one. So highly recommend that. You've read it too, Mr. B. Yes. Oh, I, I, I loved it. It was something I picked up kind of, ah, everybody's reading this. I need to read this. I should read this. And I think I, I think it was last summer. And it, I think that was one of the books I ripped through the fastest yeah, since, since I was like in eighth grade and read Harry Potter. You know that she's also an incredible singer. I mean, it comes up in the book that she's a great singer, but you can watch performances of her singing on, on YouTube. Like she performed at some, maybe like Northwestern University's graduation. Um, yeah. So she is a great singer too. That is a weird thing about, about reading nonfiction today is if you read nonfiction, you instantly have access to the rest of these people's lives. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like you can yeah, I definitely, as soon as I finished reading that book, I Googled and read everything about her and just because it was so interesting. You can like find people's Facebooks. I'm not advocating doing any, <laughs> any, any deep dives into your author, but it's just weird that, oh wait, these people live in the same world as us. Yeah, uh, yeah, for fiction. sure, real people. Um, okay, what are you listening to? You know, I think I've actually been listening to a bit less music than usual, but I, I probably should um, spend some more time on my headphones. Um, but I was listening to just some kind of early Bob Dylan the other day. Um, I, for Ooh. some reason, I find kind of like music from from the, the protest era, the 60s and stuff, like kind of soothing for times of like turmoil, because it was obviously a time of turmoil then. Right. And at least it helps me, it, it calms my anxieties a little bit to know that, um, you know, it's felt like the world's falling apart like so many times in history. Right. Like we're not, we're not unique in feeling this way. I mean, maybe this is a unique moment. I'm not saying it's not, but, um, you know, for decades people lived under the threat of, of constant fear of nuclear war and, and being drafted and sent away and stuff like that. So yeah, some of that kind of protest era music, um, really kind of speaks to me a lot so right. for me it's been a bit of bob dylan lately yeah because it's easy to kind of fall into a spiral of despair about the world and what's yeah. nice is that it's not that you're even recognizing that despair in another era but you're recognizing the hope that springs from it and you can kind of borrow that hope and optimism that's so true yeah and you know maybe things don't always work out exactly the way the the, the people the hopeful people are thinking but you know eventually we, we come out on the other side of every crisis right so um so yeah i think that's an important thing to remember yeah um any tv shows any movies you want to recommend um i've been watching it's on amazon prime called um hunters um i think it's called hunters maybe the hunters anyway it's kind of like a vigilante show Ooh. with um it takes place in in new york city in the, the 1970s Oh. Um, and it's about a group of people who are hunting um, ex-Nazis, or I yes. guess still Nazis, honestly. They're not really ex, but um, Nazis who, who um, came over to the U.S. after World War II and are, are living lives in secret, sometimes with the, the, the aid of, of the U.S. government, because um, they might be like scientists for NASA right. or something like that. Anyway, so these are a group of people who are, are hunting them down and, and taking... Um, vigilante justice against them um, based on a true story or i think some parts of it for sure are um like i know that there there is some truth to this whole um ex-nazi scientists were brought over to work at nasa Thank and you. Be part of the 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 like the moon moon landing and stuff like that but i haven't like actually read all that history yet um it stars al pacino which is really cool um because he's a legend and then um I also think it's just really interesting because it's set in like the, the mid to late seventies in New York city, which um, I guess I've always known that like New York city in, in the seventies and eighties was like this, like kind of incredibly like dirty and like um, just like an interesting place. And that, um, you know, like the trains are all covered in graffiti and it has a particular look about it. Um, like it has that kind of like Gotham look Gotham. or whatever. Um, but I didn't know that in, in 1975, New York city actually went like, pretty much completely financially insolvent they started having to like fire police and firefighters they asked for a bailout from the federal government and president ford at the time said no deal with your problems yourself um 
So, um, but yeah, like the New York Times ran a headline in 1975 that was like Ford to New York City, um, like just go die or something like that. I can't remember the exact word, right. but but like that time period in New York City was this incredibly difficult time as well. Um, and I think that makes for a really interesting backdrop to like a period piece TV show. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it's a visually impressive. I love watching like kind of period piece things where they have to recreate some, not just like time and place, but also like the feeling of that, that time and place. Right. So you're finding, you're finding lots of stuff from um, maybe, I don't want to say, you know, not moments in history that are exactly the same as now, but moments in history that have a nice, that have a reflection of, of the current times, at least the feeling of the current times. Yeah, and maybe that's by accident, you know, maybe that's like me looking for things, because I didn't like pick that show because right. of that. Like I learned about that issue in New York City's history after starting to watch that show, not, not before, so um, I don't know, maybe it's just like a tendency I have to well, look sorry. for those connections. Right, right, I was gonna say you start to recognize you read into things what you're experiencing in the moment. Yeah, not yeah, that that makes for sure. It, not that that makes it any less less real. Yeah, I guess um, that's a fun thing about being a, a reader or a consumer of media is that it's like the process is never, you know, just being given information. It's like this like back and forth process where like right. you learn and like the, the, the experience changes based right. on the consumer. There's you and there's what you're consuming, the media. And the meaning's not in you. The meaning's not there. The meaning's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a dialogue. Together. Cool. All right. So we're going to do a little bit of this or that. Um, I'm going to go straight off the dome piece. I don't have my notes with me. Uh, we're going to keep this rapid fire. Cool. Let's go. Flip flops or Crocs? Flip flops. First period off or eighth period off? Oh, uh, eighth period off. Cheese or meat? Ooh, cheese, just because I don't want to forsake my home state of Wisconsin. Biology or chemistry? Biology. Sorry, Miss Kringle. April or October? October. That's my birthday month. Uh, Fridays or Saturdays? Fridays. Last one is going to be zoom or google hangouts zoom all day um right. yeah man zoom is so much better put together sorry google <laughs> i hope google's not listening to me but yeah yeah zoom all right well uh mr nystrand thank you for being on the show today uh yeah thanks for having me this enjoy, was fun it was enjoyable sitting down talk sorry we couldn't do this from uh different locations but uh we will persevere yeah, it's, it's for the best we got to do our yep. part all right all right cool man have a good day all right, I'm going to stop the recording. All right, viewers, you'll find some links there. And in the meantime, enjoy your push-up challenges. Ugh.